السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters When a child is born there is a lot of excitement And Allah Almighty says the child is born upon what is known as fitra Nature If that child was to grow up with no contamination whatsoever It would recognize Allah it would recognize that there is a maker. It would naturally incline towards that which is good and pure. And it would understand many things just by nature. But there is contamination that happens starting from the parents. So the way the parents want the child to think or the way the parents themselves think and operate and behave is exactly how the child will mimic, will follow, and will grow up. So you find some parents, as the child is little, they do not think about how they're speaking. They say whatever they want. As the child grows up, the child repeats the same words, has the same style, swears in the same way. And you have other parents whom... For them, what's important is the pleasure of Allah, salah, zakah, respecting people, speaking in a polite way, and so on. The child automatically picks up this from the parents. This is a gift that Allah has bestowed upon the parents, but it's also a challenge and a test. And then the child begins to show an interest based on what the parents have an interest in. The child begins to show an interest based on what the community that the child is growing up in shows an interest in. It's very interesting because when you have a little child who grows up in a home that is blessed, filled with goodness and the pleasure of Allah, interested in helping, interested in humbleness, humility, interested in worshipping Allah alone, you find the children themselves are disciplined, they are beautiful, just by way of being brought up in that family or in that community. But now, we've, begun, we've started seeing from a while, materialism overtaking in an unprecedented way, whereby from a young age, if you were to ask a child, what would you like as you grow up? The child would say, I want a Ferrari. I want a huge mansion, a home. I'm going to buy this. I want to fly to Mars with those people who are going with these, you know, spacecraft. I'd like to this and that. And Allah is not in that equation at all. It's all about materialistic things. What would you like to do and achieve in life? They forget that Allah might never allow them to see more than 20 years. They might die at the age of 20, 15, wherever else it may be, 25. They might go. What did they do in their aim to get to that spacecraft or that Lamborghini or that house mansion or to own a holiday home in Hawaii, wherever else it may be, in their dedication and focus upon that, they lost focus of the hereafter. Say, so if you were to ask a child, as you grow up, what would you like? And the child says, I'd like to please Allah. I'd like ultimately Jannah. Then you're speaking. And this goes for adults as well. What do you want in life? People say, I want to make my first million by the age of 20. Allah's only going to allow you to see 19 years. Then what? Okay, you made your million at the age of 20. Allah's only going to allow you to live for 25 years. He's going to take you away. Life was always a test. We told you that from the beginning you didn't believe it. So you left so early and guess what? You didn't prepare for the day you're going to meet with Allah. I'm not saying don't have goals and aims in life. We do want to own, for example, something. Let's have a comfortable home, a comfortable ride. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about the three signs or the three points of happiness, contentment, goodness in this world. When Allah has blessed you with things, the three goodnesses of the dunya, a good wife, a good home, and a good conveyance, meaning your vehicle. If you have those three, you're set. What more do you want? But man wants more and more and more. Subhanallah. And it's not haram, but not at the expense of your relationship with Allah.
That's the thing. Do you fulfill your salah? You did. You do. Your fajr, you got up. Well, you're preparing for the day you're going to die. You're going to be having a palace in Jannah. You're preparing for the day you're going to meet with your maker. I put my head on the ground and I said, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Glory be to my Rabb, my creator, the one who provides for me, protects me, the curer, the nourisher, the one whom I'm going to return to. You are the greatest, the highest. Here I am with my head on the ground for you. That is preparation for the day you are going to meet with Allah. It's more important than the Lamborghini and the preparations here in this world to see where you're going to be at the age of 40. Today's millionaires will tell you, I made my first million at the age of 25. Big deal. Big deal. How is it going to get you where you need to go? How many years are you going to live for? So this is the thing. We need to focus on the right things. We need to realize if someone were to ask you or your children or our children or anybody, what would you like to achieve? The first thing is I want to achieve the pleasure of Allah. Then I would like to achieve so much and so much. Recently, I heard one of the interviews of an extremely wealthy Muslim man and he said in that interview that one thing that gives me a kick is to give charity to the poor. Subhanallah. I want to outdo everyone else who gives charity and I want to be known by Allah. Imagine a wealthy man saying I want to be known by Allah as a man who got and gave, got and gave. I got and I gave. Subhanallah. Nobody's wealth has ever been depleted because of a charity they gave. You give, you get. I love the narration where we're taught that Allah Almighty says, Anfiq, Yabna Adama, Unfiq alayk. O son of Adam, spend. Spend on others, and I will spend on you. Subhanallah. Give. And see me giving you. Try it out. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, this worldly life, you know, is full of challenges. Nobody has it as they want. Not one person. Full of challenges from the beginning to the end. Like I said last week, when you came onto this earth, you actually were crying. That's how bad it was. May Allah grant us goodness. And you're going to have challenges every year. Don't think things are going to ease out. No way. Nothing eases out totally. It might ease temporarily for a while. Allah says we kept it that way. So that you can thank Allah. If you're a believer, Allah says we'll give you the world. We'll make you content. If you're not a believer, you don't have a relationship with Allah. No matter how much you have, you won't be content. And that's why you find thuggery, robbery, criminal behavior and so on. Among the wealthy sometimes, yet they have so much they don't want others to get. Have you seen an individual anywhere in the world? It happens. Maybe perhaps including here without specifics. You have someone with a massive business turnover of millions of dollars. And they feel threatened by a tuck shop selling the same thing across the road. Threatened. Why? I need those millions, not this guy. What are you trying to do? Learn from Allah. How much do you want? Let that guy earn. Allah will bless you. Help him, prod him, give him, let him come up. Allah will give you. You made someone come up, Allah will make you come up. That's how it should be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. But the greed that we have has actually turned us away from Allah because the focus is no longer about salah, even though we might pray, but that's not our focus. We are praying by the way. Many people pray without concentration. Many people f read the Quran on a daily basis, but what do they know about the Quran? Nothing. I'm doing it ceremonially just because I need to get it done. That's it. That's not how it should be. You need to fulfill your salah because... You want to become close to Allah. A sign of the acceptance of your salah is when you're humble with the rest of the creatures that Allah's created. That's a sign that you're truly close to Allah. How can I claim to be close to the maker who made everybody else, but I'm rude to them, I'm rough with them, I swear them, I mock at them, I tease them, I make them feel belittled, and I think I'm a big deal, and I think I'm close to Allah. Why? I pray five times a day. Big deal. There are others who pray more than you and they are more humble than you are. So compete in those things. Compete in goodness. You must know where to focus. And this is why we say, my brothers, my sisters on earth, there are four types of people. As they enter, 
the hereafter. The first one, the one whom Allah has blessed with a lot in this world and a lot in the hereafter. Well done, mashallah. They have achieved. Allah gave them here and there. Atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Allah gave them here and because they were humble, because they were close to Allah, because they had good character and conduct, which is lacking in most of us, Allah blessed them with the hereafter as well. So they got both. The second category, those who have nothing on earth, they struggle all day, every day throughout their lives, year after year, until the day they died. But in the hereafter, they achieved Jannah, paradise. We tell them, congratulations, you won. Don't you agree? Right now on earth, they'll tell you, how am I a winner? Are you close to Allah? Yes. Are you a humble person? Yes. Do you respect the others? Yes. Do you do this? Yes. Do you do that? Yes. Well, if that's the case, I want to tell you good news to you. Subhanallah. Today, I heard of one of my close friends, much older than me. We used to call him Uncle Yaqub. He passed away in Zambia, Lusaka. And subhanallah, blessed day. It's a Friday, isn't it? He was a good man. We talk about him. So many are passing away, but there are only a few who've left a mark. They leave a legacy. Their character will, uh, will outlive their own lives because people will talk about it. When they speak about you after your death in a good way, it's good for you. Good for you. May Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus, make it easy for his family and all the marhumin, those who've passed on. The third category are those who got everything in this world. But they've lost the hereafter. That's a loss. Imagine you got everything for 50 years. 50 years. I was dealing with a case recently where someone actually did say from among the people who were talking and who had a dispute. They said, you know what? What's the point of this dispute? Life is so short. And it struck me to say, if influential people can say that, who are we? What's the point of this dispute? Life is so short. What did you gain? Nothing. Zero. Allah gave you a few years. May Allah grant us goodness. So some people have everything on earth, but they've only had goodness for 30 years. After that, they are gone to a place where they will struggle forever and ever. And then the last lot are those. Those who have nothing on earth. And they're still arrogant and they're still haughty and they have no relationship with Allah. Those, subhanallah, they have lost everything completely. When they get to the hereafter, they have nothing. That's a great loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, grant us goodness, open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of the dunya and the akhirah and help us to focus on the right things. It's not wrong to be a person who has in this dunya. But it's wrong to divorce yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's wrong to become arrogant, haughty, and not to work on your character and conduct. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.